This is a WMUR Commitment 2020 special in partnership with the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. Conversation with the candidate. Tonight, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Good evening and welcome to our Conversation with the Candidate series. I'm Adam Sexton and our guest this evening is U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Tonight we'll be getting to know Senator Klobuchar and where she stands on key issues. At the start of the show, I'll be asking the candidates some questions and then after a break, we'll have our studio audience ask their questions in a town hall format. But before we begin with that, let's take a quick look at the candidate's biography. Amy Klobuchar was born in Plymouth, Minnesota in 1960. She went to public school there and was valedictorian of her high school class before graduating with the highest honors from Yale. She obtained her law degree from the University of Chicago and began practicing in Minnesota and was a partner at a law firm there. For eight years, Klobuchar headed the largest prosecutor's office in Minnesota, and during that time, she led an effort to pass the state's first felony DWI law. In 2006, she became the first woman elected to represent Minnesota in the U.S. Senate, winning re-election in 2012 and 2018. As a senator, she pushed for legislation to end human trafficking and to combat the opioid epidemic. Klobuchar also fought to pass consumer product safety laws to address certain toxic products, and her work led to the largest furniture recall in American history, as well as for millions of defective airbags to be removed from vehicles. Senator Klobuchar is married and has a daughter. Senator Klobuchar, thank you for joining us well, for thank Conversation you so with much, Adam. It's we great appreciate to you be being here. here. So there are 20 plus Democratic candidates in this field right now, and Democratic voters are looking for a winner. So what assurances can you give them that you will be victorious in November 2020? I have won every race that I have ever run. Uh, I am someone uh, that puts the people first. Um, in my state, which is like New Hampshire, uh, kind of a swing state, a purple state. I have gone to every county every year, and I go not just where it's comfortable, but where it's uncomfortable. And as a result, um, I have won every single congressional district. I won 42 counties that uh, Donald Trump uh, actually won, and I do it uh, by just looking people in the eye and telling the truth and telling them uh, what I think needs to happen. I believe in governing from opportunity, and not from chaos. And I think there's just been way too much chaos going on in Washington. And what I know of New Hampshire, uh, they like to get things done and they like people uh, that are going to be looking out for them and having their back. The words constitutional crisis are being used with increasing frequency on Capitol Hill right now. And we just learned that Secretary Mnuchin is not going to hand over the president's tax returns, which Congress has requested. What happens next in this ongoing scenario here? And do you worry at all about overreach by your fellow Democrats? I think the first thing we need to do is to protect our elections. Um, what Russia did is they didn't use a missile and they didn't use a tank, uh, but they used a computer and they invaded our democracy all the same. The president's head of intelligence, the president's FBI director, they've all said the same thing, that this happened. And New Hampshire is a state that believes in free elections and believes that people should have a say, not a foreign government. And that's why I think it's important that Director Mueller be able to testify, to tell us what happened. We know they broke into the elections equipment. Uh, we know that they uh, hacked into campaigns, and we just can't let this happen again. And I hope we'll pass my Secure Elections Act, uh, which requires backup paper ballots and also audits. It's a bipartisan bill with a Republican. And also that we start making sure that those Facebook ads and Twitter ads, that we know where the money came from and we know what those ads are. Because last time there was a bunch of basically criminal ads, some paid for with rubles, Russian rubles, that showed up on people's feeds. You had an opportunity to question Attorney General Barr recently in his uh, handling of the Mueller investigation. Let's fast forward to a Klobuchar presidency. Let's just say we get there. What changes or reforms would you undertake at DOJ uh, to undo perhaps what some Democrats feel has been done there? That's a great question. I think the attorney general should be the people's lawyer. Yes, you work with the president and the agencies, uh, but bottom line, your job is to make sure that the law is enforced and the law is obeyed. And what really bothers me about what's happening right now is that this 
Attorney Jessel has not put the people first. And there are a lot of other things I would work on, of course. Um, I would make sure that our voting laws are respected and that we allow people to vote instead of stopping them from voting. I would want to make sure that the Affordable Care Act stays strong. Uh, one thing that got unnoticed this last week while that bar hearing was going on, the spectacle, this Justice Department filed a legal brief in the Fifth Circuit, which is uh, involving Texas, which basically says to repeal the entire Affordable Care Act. That means the protections on pre-existing conditions out the window. That's what they've asked for. That is all part of the Affordable Care Act or the way you can keep people on your insurance till uh, they're 26, your kids. Those are parts of the Affordable Care Act. It doesn't even matter if you're getting private insurance those protections are for you. And they filed something to repeal it. So certainly I wouldn't be doing those kinds of things uh, when I put an attorney general in place. What's the first action you would take on the issue of climate change? Uh, sign us back into that climate change agreement internationally. It is ridiculous. We are now the only country in the world. New Hampshire knows about this with the rising sea levels and what this means for our world with the effects it having on our forests. All through the country we've seen wildfires, we've seen flooding in the Midwest. Um, I think the video that tells it all is of that dad uh, driving his kid through those fires in Northern California, his house probably burning behind him, and he's singing to her as the flames are going over the top of their car to calm her down. It's happening now. Get in the climate change agreement and then get the clean power rules back in place as well as the gas mileage standards. And on infrastructure, you've proposed a trillion dollars in new spending to shore up uh, America's roads, uh, railways and all that. The, the president and Congress are now talking about two trillion. They have to up the ante here to compete. Up the ante, except for one thing. Adam, I've shown how I'm going to pay for it. And last time I've checked, uh, working with your great senators, Gene Shaheen and Maggie Hassan, I've seen that they are fiscally aware uh, that you got to be careful how you pay, spend taxpayers' money. And in this point, I have made a very clear plan of how you're going to pay for this. I think we need a major investment in infrastructure, and I think there's plenty of ways with the way they did international taxation, which doesn't affect most people in New Hampshire. That brings in $150 billion, and how they've structured uh, some of the corporate taxes. But what I really want to do is make sure that we have roads at work and bridges at work. We get rail to places like Manchester and this part of New Hampshire. You look at the facts, this is the only area with 500,000 or more people that doesn't have commuter rail. And that's why I think this is such a good project. I've met uh, with Mayor Craig and I have uh, met with a number of the other leaders um, in New Hampshire from labor to business. Uh, this is a great plan. And we're not gonna be able to get something like that if New Hampshire has to pay for it all themselves. There has to be help from the federal government. Senator Klobuchar, thank you for answering these questions. Even to tougher ones await, though, in the next oh, studio. Oh, that'll be fun. Coming up after the break, we'll bring our studio audience into this conversation. Stay with us.